you today and um, we're really, really excited to kick off this very first um, symposium for CAPTI. Um, CAPTI stands for Center for Advancing Research in Transportation, Emissions, Energy and Health. And it's a university transportation center funded by the U.S. Department of Transportation. It's a so-called Tier 1 center and it's a consortium of universities. So it's not only DEI or Texas A&M, it's a consortium of universities comprised of Johns Hopkins University, University of Texas, El Paso, Georgia Tech, and University of California, Riverside as well, with DTI in the lead. And um, my consortium members are all here as well at the symposium, so you'll get the opportunity to meet all of them as well. Um, Kati, um, like I said, the focus is transportation, emissions, energy, and health. And obviously, in the health space, we very much focus on emissions, vehicle emissions, and health. But we are very aware that when you look at transportation and health, there are many pathways um, between health and transportation. And you really need to look at the problem in a system-wide system way. It's not only the emissions or the air quality, it's also green space, it's accessibility, it is active transportation, so it's a broad spectrum. And uh, Pakti is very aware of that, and in this deliberations in the next day and a half, we're definitely going to talk about more than just vehicle emissions and air quality. Well, we conceived this idea a little bit over two years ago when the Pakti Center was formed. And uh, we said we want to have a symposium just to kick things off, get experts from across the world in the same room and, and have a good discussion and see where this research needs to go. And I have to say we, we had very modest expectations when we, we, when we conceived this idea of the first symposium. And I have to quote you some numbers that we actually said. And those people that uh, brainstormed with me, my partners, know that I'm telling the truth. Um, we said if we could get 25 abstracts, uh, it would be great. And uh, if we have uh, 75 people that would attend this symposium, that would be awesome. So that was our bar that we set. Um, I have to report a few statistics uh, that really blew, blew us away. Um, in terms of abstracts, we received just under 100. I think the number was 97 when it all came in. And it's not only the quantity of the abstracts that blew us away, but also the quality. We thought, okay, you know, uh, close to 100 abstracts, 50 of them we can throw away and forget about them. No, we couldn't. They were all excellent. It was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is good stuff. And hence, we have a very packed and full program. So uh, don't blame us for putting this very heavy program ahead of you. It's because we got this excellent um, abstract submitted and clearly a lot of um, expertise and, 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 and specialists in this area coming forward and, and presenting your work. So that is exciting. In terms of registrants, um, like I said, we were hoping to get about 75 um, people um, to register for our very first symposium. Um, this facility can actually house um, 150, so um, that was kind of our gap anyway. Um, it turns out that we have just over 150 people registered and in attendance, so that's a great problem to have. We tell the fire marshal, but we didn't even exceed it, what we were supposed to. So isn't that a fantastic problem to have in your first voting? So that's wonderful. When we uh, look at another statistic real quick is, uh, this is a health and transportation symposium. So. Um, I've personally been to many um, workshops and, and meetings where you, you just meet with transportation folks. You know, I'm a transportation engineer, so that's my background. <coughs> I go to many conferences where you know you hang out with your, your peers, so that are transportation people. This is a health and transportation symposium, so the exciting thing is we have lots of people on the health side as well as the transportation side. And that is why it's so exciting. We bring the two professions together. And that is how we can really move this agenda forward, because it's not one profession taking this forward. And we're going to hear a lot of that when uh, Dan Greenbaum and Neil Peterson speak, because they are both experts and um, leaders in their field, one from transportation, one from health. But I think the key message they're going to be delivering will be these professions need to get together. So that is the exciting part. So in terms of statistics, uh, it looks like when we look at the people registered, we've got 50 from the health side and about 100 from transportation. So that's a fantastic mix, getting these two professions together. Also, a good inter 
international um, flavor because um, this is not only U.S. folks that came to this symposium. We've got seven countries represented, and the statistic that really blew me away is that uh, you know everybody is from 60 different cities, so we've got a huge geographic distribution from everything. Um, it made it actually humbling. Um, many of us are from this little town called College Station, Texas. So, um, well, uh, we've got many other cities represented here, and that's awesome. It's great to have it in Austin, Texas. And um, the weather normally in Austin this time of the year is not too bad. So compared to other places, it's still not, not too bad. Um, the, the final statistic I just want to share with you is with regards to students, and that is a very important one. When we talk about <coughs> university transportation centers, students are key. We need to, one of, part of our mission in the UTC is to bring up the next generation of transportation leaders. So students are absolutely key in this whole mix. Um, we've got about 30 students uh, represented here, and we're very excited to have them, have them here mixed in with, with, with the rest of us. And um, most of them will be presenting either a poster or a podium presentation. So um, our students will be very involved, very engaged from all sorts of universities. And um, I want to also tell the students there's a little bit of pressure. Um, we've identified several judges that's going to judge your poster presentation as well as your podium presentation. And at the end of the symposium tomorrow afternoon, there will be uh, an award ceremony. So the best student poster presentation will be awarded, as well as the best student podium presentation. So you'll get a lovely uh, certificate with the party logo on it, and you can, you can frame that and put it on the wall. <laughs> but that is probably not the thing that's going to really excite you. Uh, there's going to be $250 in cash in an envelope that you're going to get along with it. <laughs> So I think that will typically get the students' attention. I remember that back in the day when I was a student, uh, cash, uh, you never say no to that. So uh, I'm sure, do your best and we look forward and good luck to the judges and uh, may the best students uh, win. One final um, piece of statistic that I didn't read to you, and that is the mix in terms of the profession. So we've got seven from university, 70, 70 approximately. 50 from the public sector and 30 from the private sector. So again, from that perspective, it's a great mix. It's not like we're all academics or all public sector folks. We've got a good mix. And I know people typically like to, to mix with people outside from your normal sphere. So in other words, I, I enjoy mixing with folks in the private and the public sector because I see a lot of academics in my daily, daily business. So um, that is in terms of statistics. So, the agenda is concerned, like I said, I warn you, it's going to be full, it's going to be packed. We started yesterday with three uh, pre conference uh, workshops, um, and I was able to attend some of that because um, the only problem I really had was they were running concurrently, so um, it was kind of difficult to be in the same room at the same time. So, But they were excellent, I really have to say, they were really, really well run and great discussions. The one dealt with um, data. Another one dealt more on the freight side, and another one on the intersection of health and transportation. And they were packed. Those were the two rooms uh, to my left here. Uh, they each had a capacity of about 40 people, and they were both packed. So that was a great uh, start to the symposium. The rest of the um, symposium is going to be, like I said, uh, fairly packed. When I'm done, um, I'm going to turn it over to Greg Winfrey to, to make some more remarks. And um, then Katie Turnbull is going to take over to, to run the keynote session. And like I hinted, uh, Neil Peterson, um, Executive Director of DRB, and Dan Lindbaum, the President of the Health Effects Institute, will deliver the two keynote speeches. After that, we have um, a plenary session, plenary speakers. Uh, they are invited speakers. It's going to be facilitated by Tom Burke of John Hopkins, and the speakers will be Chris Frey, Bakia Nelson, and Oliver Gow. So that's going to be a great session. After that, um, we, we're going to have lunch. And the way lunch is going to work is uh, we will pick up our food just outside there, the foyer area, and bring it in here and, and come sit here at the round tables and enjoy our lunch. After lunch, um, we're going to continue with um, special discussions. There's going to be um, breakout sessions around the special discussions. After that, I want to encourage you to go to poster session number one, also on, in the 
the outside, you'll interact with the poster presenters. After that, we're going to have two consecutive breakout sessions, and that is the part I really want to warn you about, because um, that will continue till 6.30 p.m. And just when you're really tired and you want to run up to your room, don't do that. Um, <laughs> go to um, the reception, which will take place just after that. At 6.30 p.m., we will have our reception, and at the same time, post the session number two. So that's a great time to to enjoy some uh, beverages and some, some some food, and also interact with the folks presenting the posters. So I want to encourage you to stick around and, uh, and go in and enjoy that. Just before I close, I just want to acknowledge some of my colleagues. Um, it's easy for me to come up here and um, say a few words and. Um, and um, you know, make it sound like it was easy, but uh, a lot of work happened behind the scenes. And I really want to acknowledge many of my colleagues uh, at TTI and Parti, who did a ton of work behind the scenes to make this happen. And um, when you registered, you got to meet Mary Kiri and Karen Smith, some other people, um, Anne Sue, Jamie Johnson, Mohammed Askaria, Andrew Glazer, that all worked very, very hard. But then I want to really acknowledge three of my colleagues who for the past year or so really, really worked their tails off. And um, I want them to stand up, please. Um, Tara Rahani. Yesterday, um, I was talking to Bruce Appleyard, and he said he will host, he will help us get it hosted in, in San Diego. So, a lot of people uh, get a broad smile on your face when you're going to San Diego. So, that's kind of the, the direction we need to go. Um, finally, um, it is my great pleasure to introduce my boss. He's the TTI Agency Director, Greg Winfrey. And honestly, nobody is more qualified than Greg um, to talk about the UTC program, the significance of a symposium like this. Before joining TTI about two years ago, Greg Winfrey was the uh, Assistant Secretary for Research and Technology at the US Department of Transportation. That was a significant portfolio. He was the highest level official there at the, at the US DOT. Uh, his vast portfolio that he managed also included the UTC program, the 70 odd million dollar a year UTC program. That was just part of Greg's portfolio. So he ran that and he has intimate knowledge about the UTC, the importance and the significance of that. So it's my pleasure to, to turn it over to Greg. Thank you. so much, Joe. All right, folks, we're in Texas now, so the Texas name that we're reading is Howdy. So when I say Howdy, you all have to say Howdy, man. She must be a long one. Shake your head, no. <laughs> howdy. 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 See, that's how we do it. Excellent. <laughs> welcome to Texas. Welcome to the great city of Boston. And more importantly, welcome to the Carti uh, Symposium. Uh, as Joe mentioned, there are many of us here from uh, TTI. For those of you who aren't familiar with the complete acronym, we used to be the Texas Transportation Institute. But since we're uh, co-located and a part of the Texas A&M system, we are now the Texas A&M Transportation Institute, an organization that's been uh, around, has been founded in 1950 as research and technical support for the Texas Department of Transportation. So you can imagine a state this size that has twice as many roadway miles as any other state uh, in the country, it's a significant undertaking to build out the road network. It certainly would have been in and around uh, the 50s. So with the different types of biodiverse regions and soil quality and all the challenges to build out the road network, that's where uh, Texas A&M and many of our university partners, including the 
University of Texas, Center for Transportation Research, and others uh, helped Texas build out this great road network. Um, but before I get started, talk a little bit about the uh, UTC program. I wanted to thank uh, my colleagues and friends, Mr. Dan Greenbaum from the Health Effects uh, Institute, and Mr. Neil Peterson for leading uh, this keynote session. Uh, it's quite impressive that leaders of this magnitude have taken time out of their busy schedules to invest in what we're doing here uh, with CAR-T, but there's no argument, uh, we can't controvert that these issues are important and the convergence of these two, not just industries, but disciplines and thought processes is overdue. So I commend everyone in the room for taking this uh, with the appropriate seriousness and moving uh, these issues forward. Now Joe also mentioned that there are a number of different uh, disciplines and all kinds of folks uh, in the room. I'm a lawyer by training, so I do want to give a shout out uh, to the other. There's at least one other lawyer in the same car last night <laughs> from the city of Dallas. And interestingly, the four folks who were in our vehicle going to dinner last night, we all had experience in the copyright industry. So Juan and our own, uh, as well as James and I, it was quite interesting. We thought four copper industry people would wind up in the same vehicle. So anyway, let me talk a little bit about the UTC program. As Joe mentioned, I was Assistant Secretary for Research at U.S. DOT. And uh, the UTC program uh, has a long history. Uh, it started uh, as a small program, grew into a large program with about 80 universities participating, and 60 of those were earmarks. So those are programs where a member of the legislature would give dollars to a university or ensure that dollars were passed through to a university. And the realization became around the uh, 2009, 2010 time frame that these universities weren't necessarily serving the needs of what US DOT wanted, right? They were more beholden to their legislators. So in 2010, there was an attempt to uh, turn the program into a completely competitive program, and that fell in my lap. So the largest, uh, the largest corpus of discretionary funds in the department was converted from a program that was three quarters uh, uh, earmarks to a program that was 100% competitive, uh, along with uh, an insistence that uh, proposals utilize the consortium <coughs> model. And I think it's proven itself over the past several competitions that the consortium model works best when you bring together universities and researchers from different organizations <coughs> different ways of thinking to tackle complex and vexing problems, you really get the best out of what academia and the best out of what science and research can bring to the table. So I'm certainly pleased uh, with that with that development. And CAR-T, I believe, is one of the premier, um, one of the premier centers that shows the power of thinking outside of the box. Um, I had to read proposals, the safety can we compete, was 93 proposals that came in. The MAP 21 we could beat was 118 proposals that came in. It was my job to read all of those. And I can tell you, out of all the proposals I've read, many from uh, world-class organizations, all first rate, uh, but the CAR-T concept was something that was completely unique. And that's how and why the department uh, placed its faith in what this group is, is tackling. Um, so now, the conversation about transportation is turning less from transportation as a modal concept, more to what we're hearing now in the international and intelligent transportation systems uh, community as uh, the efficient and safe movement of people, data, and goods. Now folks are starting to add in that data uh, aspect, and that's critical because as vehicles and as systems become more plugged in, if you will, the data streams that come off can be to uh, interesting and dynamic uh, approaches to attack some of these problems. So, now car team research for transportation and public health are collaborating on research topics such as safety, air pollution, noise, physical activity, and access to goods and services that support healthful living. And that also aligns with where the department was when I was there, where we were uh, working on a concept known as ladders of opportunity. And 
focused on the equity aspect of transportation. Everything from uh, health impacts to fair access to transit and, and transportation uh, solutions that would connect communities with health care, with education, and, and, and job uh, centers. Right? So I'm certainly pleased uh, with what is, is going on in this great uh, institution. So I want to um, close by extending a warm welcome to everyone again and look forward to the outcomes of the symposium and what we can accomplish together in the future. Now I'm pleased to introduce the moderator of this morning's keynote session, my friend and colleague, and actually one of the very first TTI folks I ever met, Dr. Katie Turnbull, who's exec Executive Associate Director of TTI at a Texas A&M University Regents Fellow. Now I'm pleased to introduce the moderator. Uh, did I say that already? See, you don't have your coffee first. Why you <laughs> but Dr. Turnbull has a 30-year career at the Institute. She serves on the TTI executive team, maintains a diverse research portfolio and manages TTI's planning and environment research group. This group is researchers at Ryan College Station, Arlington, Austin, Houston, Galveston, all here in Texas, Washington, D.C., and Mexico City. Katie is also an executive professor in the Department of Landscape Architecture and Urban Planning at Texas A&M University, a member of the graduate faculty, and serves as TTI's Research Compliance Officer and Scientific Integrity Officer. So Katie's leadership in the transportation community is extremely impressive. She is active in the Transportation Research Board of the National Academies of Sciences, the Institute of Transportation Engineers, and the American Public Transit Association has held leadership roles in all three organizations. She recently completed her term as Chair of the Transportation Research Board Executive Committee and has been appointed to a second three-year term on the Executive Committee. She's also been appointed Chair of the Executive Committee's Subcommittee on Planning and Policy Review. So without further ado, please help me welcome my colleague and friend, Dr. Turnbull, to the podium. <laughs> 